Hello and welcome to Middle Eastern Thursdays. Oh my goodness, guys. I have been like dying to film this video because I have so much to tell you. So, so much. So today we are going to be doing detailed reviews. I have 10 fragrances that I have never included in a haul, but that I have been testing behind the scenes and that I'm ready to give you all of the details on today. Now these fragrances, some of them have been hyped, some of them have gone viral, and others, we were all just like waiting to see what these fragrances are really about. So today I have all of that information for you. The other thing that I wanted to remind you of is that we are in the middle of our 5,000 giveaway, right? So at the end of this video, I will be giving you all of the details on how to become a part of the giveaway. Just keep in mind that the giveaway is limited to the US only, unfortunately guys, but there was no other way around it. But before we jump right in, if this is your first time here, I'm Arahi, and in this channel, we love to talk about fragrances, makeup, and fashion. I upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. If that sounds like the type of content that you're interested in and you like that plan, then please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to leave a comment. Let's go. So today we're going to start by reviewing five of the new fragrances from Niche Emirati. Now you may recall last week I shared with you that Latafa has a totally different company under its umbrella called Niche Emirati. And this arm is supposed to be dedicated to developing and creating and releasing fragrances that are more along the lines of niche fragrances. So today I have, I think right now they have a total of eight out in the market and I was able to pick up five. So I will be sharing them with you and giving you all of the details of my use experience. So the first one that we're going to take a look at today is called Vintage Castle. And I put it back in its box so that I could share it with you because, you know, we never did a haul on this fragrance, but I wanted to make sure that you got all the details. And this box is super heavy, like really, really heavy. And so is the fragrance, by the way. But let me show you how it comes packaged. When you open the box, there's like this little pamphlet. And in this pamphlet, it just speaks to all of the current fragrances that are available as part of the Niche Emirati. And look how cool, guys. Look at this. Okay, so here is the fragrance. This is definitely very different, guys. I find that, and of course, I'll give you more details as we go along, but all of these fragrances come in very unique bottles, and all of these bottles are really weighty. It's like, they're almost like a weapon. <laughs> But, you know, seriously, they're very weighty and they feel very, very luxurious. So let's talk about Vintage Castle. The first thing that I did with all of these fragrances is try to really become familiar with the scent profile to see if they were inspired by anything because I didn't find much information on the inspiration behind these fragrances. None of these fragrances can currently be found on Fragantica, so I really had to do quite a bit of research. If I had to give one word for this fragrance, it would be patchouli. In this fragrance, there is patchouli in every stage of the olfactory journey. So when you first spray it, you get patchouli. As the journey continues, the patchouli intensifies and at the dry down, it is definitely about the patchouli. So I am telling you, if you are not into patchouli, this fragrance will not be for you. This fragrance is considered 
part of what we would call the Woody family. Because while the patchouli is front and center, of course, you know, there's always like an earthiness to patchouli. And in this fragrance, it is no different. But there's also quite a bit of woodiness in the background, right? So it is definitely a very intense fragrance. But I have also found that all of these fragrances, not only are they a bit more refined than what you typically find in a Latafa fragrance, they are definitely closer to the niche realm if not already there. Some of them, and I will share them with you as we get to them, are definitely fragrances that smell quite niche. So like I said before, Vintage Castle is a fragrance that is all about the patchouli. Yeah, without a doubt. This is a fragrance, guys, that, um, and, and, and I have to tell you, like, I like patchouli, but it's not like I am an avid fan of patchouli, right? When patchouli is done right, I think it's quite a lovely note in any fragrance. I am just not sure that I want a fragrance that has patchouli uh, prominently dominating every phase of the olfactory journey. I don't think that that's what I want, but I will tell you this fragrance is a very, very different and interesting fragrance. To me, it is definitely worthy of being called a niche fragrance because it is quite complex. There's so many layers of complexity to it because even though the patchouli is with you from beginning to end, you are going to find that other notes do play. There's a woodiness and there's like a dusty powderiness quality to this fragrance that is quite different than anything else that I've ever experienced in any other fragrance. There's also quite a Middle Eastern presence factor to this fragrance. Most of these fragrances you will find that are quite Middle Eastern, but some of them, you know, could pass for just Western fragrances. But this one, this one is definitely very Middle Eastern presence type of fragrance, if you know what I mean. This fragrance also has like midway down the journey to dry down. It has a floral note, which is mimosa, which I clearly pick up and it is absolutely beautiful. That part of the journey is just unbelievable because there's also like a sweetness that's brought on by the mimosa. Mimosa. It is quite beautiful in combination with the patchouli and those woody notes that are always in the background. Now, curiously enough, at the dry down, I find this fragrance to be quite sensual. You know, it's, it's one of those fragrances that has like an air of mystery, like a good Middle Eastern fragrance typically has like an air of mystery, like an aura of mystery. And this fragrance definitely brings that to the table. And there's a little bit of like powderiness. But in addition to that, there's a note that I was not familiar with that I had to do quite a bit of research on and I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. I apologize if I'm not, but it's called Civetta. It's C-I-V-E-T-T-A, I believe it is if I remember correctly. But that note, actually brings a, like a like an animalic quality to the fragrance. And that just takes this fragrance to the next level at the dry down. And this fragrance, guys, is really different. There is nothing like this in my collection. And I have fragrances that are focused on patchouli. I actually have two of them and they're from Electimus. I think it's Persephone's patchouli. And then there's another one that I can't remember the name, but they are solely all about that patchouli. But this fragrance, this is very different. And I have to tell you in wearing this, I really did enjoy it. This is also a beast fragrance, guys. This is no joke. This, without even having a chance to sit, I'm getting eight plus hours. In reality, the last time I wore this fragrance, I had it for like 12 hours and it was just going nonstop. The projection is so, so strong. I, I can't even tell you how many hours because the projection is almost like continuous. It is very, very strong. This is also a fragrance that you could use day or night. You could really 
wear a casual outfit and pull off this fragrance so beautifully because there is so much character to this fragrance. This is also a fragrance that you could dress up to very formal occasions. Now this fragrance, I will tell you, is one that I would never pull during the summer. This is a fragrance for me at least exclusively for fall, winter, and spring. If you like fragrances like Le Label Santal 33, you're gonna love this, like love this fragrance. But I'll tell you the performance of this fragrance is much better than Le Label Santal 33, for sure. Another fragrance that this does remind me of is uh, Serge Luton's, I think it's called Chergi or Jergi, or I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, but it's definitely Chergi. And if you're familiar with Serge Luton's, you definitely know what I'm talking about. Needless to say, this fragrance is truly unisex. This fragrance does not, oh yeah, this fragrance does not lean feminine or masculine to me. This is as real as it gets when, when you talk about unisex, well, <laughs> this is definitely a unisex fragrance. If I have to rate this fragrance, I can definitely tell you that I would give it a 9 out of 10. And I struggle to not give it a 10 out of 10. I, I just find that the note of patchouli is so dominant and so prominent in every stage of the olfactory journey that it limits the fragrance to those that are truly into patchouli. And when I rate a fragrance, I'm looking at its versatility, I'm looking at its mass appeal, you know, th there's just many considerations. But that would be the only thing that I would have to say that's not completely positive about this fragrance. Now, let's take a look at Mughal Fort. And it comes, of course, in this beautiful box. And it also has that same pamphlet that I shared in the other fragrance. It's just that I pulled it out since I knew that, you know, we were going to be unboxing it. And much like in the previous, it opens like this. And here is Mughal Fort. If I had to define it in one word, I would say that this fragrance is spicy. This is a fragrance that is quite spicy. So in order for you to appreciate and like this fragrance, you have to be someone that's into spicy fragrances. So this fragrance and oh my gosh, this bottle is so heavy. Let me tell you, this fragrance is spicy because what it opens with immediately is a burst of like cardamom and pink pepper. And I have to tell you, I just love, love, love that opening of the cardamom and the pink pepper. It is done so, so beautifully. This is really another fragrance that is totally niche to me. So midway down the journey in this fragrance, you're going to find that there's like a very interesting mix of like caramel with something that smell kinds of woody and it's supposed to be cedar, but it is just a very, very interesting uh, part of the olfactory journey of this fragrance. I love this fragrance. I can't say that enough. If you are into spicy fragrances that have other hints and touches and tonalities from other notes, like caramel guys, like would you ever really think of combining like cedar with caramel, you know, while you're having a backdrop of spices such as cardamom and pink pepper? Then at the base, you have like this very alluring and mysterious and like almost bewitching kind of effect. And it's like a combination of musk and vanilla and the spices and that caramel. It is just beautiful. And for me, at the, at the dry down, there's like a creamy quality to it that makes this fragrance even more interesting. This is a fragrance that, as you know, I, I have not had the chance to let it sit for months at a time, but I am already getting, guys, eight hours plus. Again, this is another beast mode fragrance from this niche Emirati collection. 
I am telling you, once a people start to get a hint of the difference between niche Emirati and a typical Latafa fragrance, I think this is really going to be special because truly they've taken the formulation, the, the blend, the ingredients, everything. I can tell very, very clearly that there is a difference between these fragrances and any other Latafa fragrance I had tried before. And this is a fragrance that I would also limit to just the seasons of fall, winter, and spring. This fragrance does not really call to mind any other fragrance that I've ever had on my nose. I, I, honestly, I just can't think of one fragrance that I could say, well, maybe it was inspired by, I really, and I, and I really tried, and I really went around sniffing different fragrances and looking at different note combinations, but no. If I had to speak of like um, another fragrance that gives me the same type of vibe, I would say like Theodoro's Calatini's um, Alluring Fig. Um, but, but they're not the same. The, honestly, they're not even similar to me. It's just like this would be the fragrance that I would pull at the same time that I would pull Alluring Fig. You know what I mean? Like for the same type of occasion, the same type of feel that I'm looking for, that's what I would do. All in all, guys, I highly recommend this fragrance. Oh my goodness, it it is just, it is so, so addictive. Definitely addictive. Okay, so the next fragrance that we are going to talk about is Niche Emirati Antique. And it comes, of course, in this huge box, as you can tell. And of course, it has the same booklet that I mentioned before. And here is the case that it comes in after the box. And this one's this one opens a little bit differently than Mughal Fort and the Castle one. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick spoiler alert on this one because as soon when I first sprayed it, immediately, guys, immediately what I got was Gris Charnel from BDK, for sure. And that has not changed at all. So this is an incredible, incredible, this is like, for me, it's like 98%. And I'll talk more about why only 98% similar to BDK's Gris Charnel. But I've smelled others that are supposed to be inspired by Gris Charnel, and I've been like, no, maybe 60% at the most. This one is for sure, like 98%. So if you've ever wanted to get your hands on Gris Charnel or you wanted a, another bottle that maybe looks different, I don't know. I'm just letting you know that this is extreme, like 98%, if not more. The only difference is that this one is a bit sweeter than Gris Charnel. Gris Charnel for me has a dryness. And give me just a minute. Yeah, Gris Charnel has a bit, I don't wanna say that it's a dry fragrance necessarily. It's just that it doesn't bring in the sweetness that Antique brings to the table. So Antique is considered uh, or has been defined by Nisha Marathi as a gourmand fragrance. If I had to define this fragrance in one word or a couple of words, I would definitely call it sophisticated elegance, which is also how I define Gris Charnel. In Antique, there's also a bit of like a lactonic quality, but, but it's just a touch. And I think that it's because my nose is really sensitive. I think that's why I pick it up because in Gris Charnel, I also get that little, but, but it's like, when I tell you, it's just a hint. It's almost like, you know, like Antique has this coconut, right? And the coconut makes the opening of this fragrance a bit creamy. It's an opening that, you know, brings in that milk note and takes the coconut and creates like a creaminess with that hint of lactonicness. And then there's also like um, a spiciness uh, combined with all that creaminess, courtesy of the cardamom, which is done beautifully. This, I have to tell you, is one of my favorites from the five that I picked up so far. This has been impeccably done, impeccably done. 
And by the way, I forgot to rate uh, Fort Mughal before, um, and, and I will come back to that in a minute. But this fragrance, this is very, very special. This has been done so, so well. With this one, I am finding that I'm getting more around the seven to eight hour mark versus the others that are just like eight plus hours, God only knows. But what I will tell you though, is that if you spray this on your clothes, it will stay on your clothes forever until you launder them. And I don't know, even after I wash them, if I'm still gonna get some sort of hint or something, because this is definitely strong. Not as strong as the Castle or Fort Mughal, but definitely strong. And it has not had a chance to sit, so imagine once it macerates. This right now is giving me very good projection. It's not um, creating like a, a trail that lasts for hours and hours and hours like the others, but it's definitely giving me very good projection. I think that this is a fragrance that you can safely adopt as your signature scent and take it to the office. This is definitely a fragrance that you can dress down or that you can dress up. For me, this is an all year round type of fragrance. You can use this spring, winter, summer, fall. This is a very, very versatile fragrance. If I had to say that, you know, there is a fragrance in, in this first group of the Nisha Marathi that I've picked up that is uh, more of a Western vibe, it's definitely antique. All in all, I give this fragrance a nine out of 10 and it's only because it is so, so Gris Charnel, right? But I could easily give this fragrance a 10 out of 10. This has been done exceptionally. So let's circle back to my rating of Mughal Fort. I have to tell you that this fragrance for me, this is definitely a 10 out of 10. I don't have anything like this. This is truly beautiful and so different. And, you know, I, I dare say that as you spray it on your skin, there will be things that will be different than what I experience on my skin, and that will be the beauty of it. But at the end, you will always have this consistent and solid quality niche-like fragrance. Okay, so the next one that we're gonna be taking a look at is Rimas. And it comes in this box. And then you open it like this. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Rimas. And, and I hope that I'm pronouncing it correctly. I probably am not. Again, I apologize. So let me start by saying that I absolutely love the, the bottle, the packaging of this one. I love all of the ones that I've shared so far and the one that's coming next. I really do love all of them, but there is just something about this one. It's so elegant. It's just so sleek. It's just beautiful, right? Now, this fragrance, as soon as I got my nose on it for the first time, immediately what came to mind was Fame from Paco Rabanne. The only difference that I pick up between Rimas and Fame from Paco Rabanne is that Paco may not have the amber quality that I pick up in this fragrance and that I absolutely love. I'll tell you right now that between Paco Rabanne's Fame and this one, I definitely prefer this one. This one has been done again, and I keep using this word because they are, they have been done exquisitely. The blend is beautiful, the note and the olfactory journey, oh my goodness, so let's talk about that. So this fragrance is the perfect, perfect combination of like oriental accords and florals and fruitiness. And it has a note of mango in here that is just luscious. That is all I can say about that note of mango. So the fragrance opens with, when I tell you the most beautiful burst of citruses, that citrus opening is just loaded with the bergamot and the orange, and it makes for a very zesty, citrusy opening. At the same time, and like seconds into you picking up those citruses, 
you get the presence of this incredible mango. This mango is ripe and it is sweet. It's not the kind of mango that when you bite into it, it's just dripping because it's so, so ripe. No, this mango is at the perfect optimal ripeness. Next, you immediately start to get the most beautiful jasmine. Oh. Guys, this fragrance is so, so good. This fragrance is so, so good. So the jasmine comes in and in the backdrop of the jasmine, of course, the, the fruit is still there, right? So the mango will be with you from the first moment you spray to dry down to hours later, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But from the opening, those citruses come along with the mango, but they take a backdrop. And then in this next part of the journey, you pick up on this jasmine, which brings in that floral quality to it. And it's done so beautifully because then in the backdrop of the jasmine is the sandalwood. And then the fragrance all of a sudden becomes like creamy. I tell you, it is unbelievable. So from the opening that was quite tropical now because of the jasmine and the sandalwood, there's like an air of elegance to the fragrance while you still have that mango very present. And then if it weren't enough, are you ready? At the dry down guys, oh my goodness. So at the dry down, you get this mix of vanilla and amber. That amber and the vanilla um, brings a tonality that will linger on your skin for hours to come while the mango and then that floral quality is still present. But to top it all off, at the dry down, there's the frankincense. Oh my goodness. Now the frankincense takes the fragrance to the next level because there's a hint of smokiness that comes from the frankincense, just giving this fragrance so much personality and like a sensual, very, very sensual touch. This fragrance, needless to say, is one that I give a 10 out of 10. And this will be a fragrance that I will use quite frequently <laughs> during the spring and definitely summer months. The longevity in this fragrance is really, really, really good. And I have a feeling that once I let it sit, it's going to just get better and better. I also think that this fragrance is not truly unisex. I think that this leans feminine, but I can definitely see a man wearing this fragrance. So the next fragrance, which is the last one from the niche Emirati fragrances that we will be taking a look at today is Tallinn. Tallinn is one that I was not able to find any uh, other fra fragrances to reference. Like I didn't find anything that that it reminds me of at all. And I tried and kept thinking, and I also did some research, but I couldn't find anything. So this may be one of the Niche Amorati original fragrances because not all of their fragrances are supposed to be inspired by something. They're supposed to be some standalone fragrances. And I believe that Tolene is one of them. If I had to give one word for Tolene, you know, to define Tolene, I would say that Tolene is a very charming kind of fragrance. Like when you want to wear a fragrance that um, helps you charm others, I think Tolene will definitely do the job. Now, that being said, I can also tell you that for me, it is truly a unisex fragrance. And if I had to pick a lean, I would say leans feminine, but it is definitely a unisex fragrance. I can definitely see a man or a woman wearing this fragrance. This fragrance opens up with, with a great deal of freshness. And it's all about that ginger, like I get the ginger immediately, and it's ginger, pear, and rose. I find that the rose is a pretty young rose. It's like a fresh rose. It's not, it's not a mature rose. It is definitely a very young rose. It's almost like it could be rose water, but no, I think it's definitely rose. 
as the journey continues, you're definitely going to pick up on orange blossom. And orange blossom is one of those notes that, in my opinion, if done right, you just can't go wrong with, right? But I will also caution because I had one of our fam members uh, leave me a message the other day telling me about, you know, Ambroxan, how Ambroxan gives her headaches. So I will tell you that there is quite a bit of Ambroxan in this fragrance. And you pick up on it almost immediately once that orange blossom comes in. The dry down, what I get is all of those notes magnificently blended with a beautiful musk. So this fragrance to me is quite ambery and musky. This is very much, uh, like I said before, a unisex fragrance. And it is a fragrance that I would pull for any season of the year, any occasion, day or night. I really, really love this fragrance and I really give it a 10 out of 10. I think it is a beautiful blend that will give you an air of sophistication. This is not ne necessarily a sexy fragrance to my nose. It's just a very beautiful musky fragrance. Now let's enter the review of five other fragrances that I have been dying to talk about. Guys, I'm gonna give you a spoiler alert. I, I am absolutely almost obsessed with all of these fragrances. So as I talk about them, please excuse the excitement because when I tell you these fragrances are everything, you'll see. So let's jump right into it and let's start with December Vanilla. So this is the box that December Vanilla comes in. And it's a beautiful box, by the way. And in the back of the box, it gives you the notes of the fragrance. The outer part of the box is a sleeve. So then you just open it. And here is the bottle. Now this is supposed to be inspired by Kiali's Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli. You know, this one. This fragrance, guys, by the way, happens to be my favorite from the entire Kiali line. So I was so interested. Number one, this is a fragrance that I was going to pick up anyway because just the name and the notes just pull. But once I heard that it was supposed to be inspired by this one, which is my favorite fragrance, if I can get better performance in this one, then of course it's a great thing. And I will always want to have a second bottle of this one because this is just magnificent. I love this fragrance. So December Vanilla, I shared the notes with you and those are the exact same notes that you find in the Kiali Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli fragrance. Let's talk about the olfactory journey of the fragrance and then we will jump into the comparison between these two fragrances before I give you my final thoughts on December Vanilla. So this fragrance is definitely a unisex fragrance as it was designed to be. And this is a fragrance that upon opening, it is like a burst of warmth and goodness. I can't even say it any other way. You have that rum, which brings a beautiful booziness to the fragrance. You have that vanilla orchid, and then you have that jasmine, which is trying to make this very gourmandish fragrance have some degree of like florals. But this fragrance is so gourmand, guys. As the journey continues, and curiously enough, you do pick up a little bit on the note of leather. But then there's that note of vanilla, there's some spices, and then there's that note of creme brulee, which drives me insane because I pick up on it so clearly, even more than in the Kayali fragrance. At the base, you have all of those notes coming together beautifully with a lot of character in the fragrance, courtesy of the notes of oud and patchouli. Now that patchouli adds a creaminess that I can't explain. It just makes me like, oh my goodness. It just makes me feel like I could just bite my arm. Oh my goodness. And get like 
that creamy creme brulee like a boozy creme brulee because that's what I get from this fragrance. I get like a boozy creme brulee that has had like, like brown sugar torched at its surface and it's just melting. It is just unbelievable. Now, in all honesty, guys, if I ever reviewed for you Kiali's Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli, I probably describe the olfactory journey just like I did with December Vanilla. So you may ask me, okay, Arahi, so what's the scoop? Is this different? Is this not different? Okay, so let me tell you what I observe. So these two fragrances are definitely quite similar, but I'm going to tell you right now that in my assessment, these fragrances, this one is about 85% Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli from Kayali, 85%, because there are some differences. The first difference that I picked up on immediately is that this fragrance has a lot more vanilla than the Kayali fragrance, which makes this fragrance a tad sweeter. Is this fragrance one of those crazy sweet, unbearable? No, 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 no. But this fragrance is definitely sweet and it is sweeter than the Kayali Vanilla Royale Sugared Patchouli. I also think that part of the reason this one is a bit sweeter um, is because number one, like I said before, it does have a ton of vanilla. It has more vanilla than the Kayali fragrance, but the Kayali fragrance also has a bit more edge and character because the note of patchouli is a bit more intense in the Kayali fragrance than in December Vanilla. I think that December Vanilla was really designed with a mind of like definitely creating a gourmand, a fragrance that would smell like something absolutely yummy, delicious, scrumptious, like truly a boozy creme brulee that has been torched with brown sugar on top. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that the Kiali fragrance was designed to also be an incredible gourmand while also being a fragrance that brings in other notes. You may also be asking yourself, okay, so do I need both in my collection? You're asking the wrong girl because, because I am absolutely in love with this fragrance. And to me, the slight differences that they have are worthy of me having a bottle of this one. And at the price point that I picked this up, it is like so worth it because this is a scent profile that I absolutely love. So December Vanilla is a fragrance that I would definitely preserve for the seasons of winter, spring, and fall. This is not a fragrance that I would pull or use at all during the summer. There is just a feel to it that speaks to me more of the fall and winter seasons and definitely the beginning of spring. As far as longevity, I can tell you that this fragrance has not had the chance to macerate, right? Because I received it and I immediately started testing it. Um, and I can tell you that I am getting right now at least six hours out of this fragrance. I'm getting a very strong projection that lasts a good two hours, and then it does not become a skin scent, it becomes a scent bubble. And then at like, like around the four hour mark is when it becomes a skin scent on my skin, and then it goes on for six hours, and sometimes, honestly, even more but I've never tried to wear it for like 10 hours or 12 hours. But I can tell you that solidly and consistently, I can get six hours out of this fragrance. All in all, guys, if I could give this fragrance more than a 10, I would. So let's just give it a 10 out of 10. This next fragrance that we're gonna be reviewing is a fragrance, guys, that from the moment I sprayed, when I received it and I sprayed it, I, I just couldn't stop using it. Like I had to remind myself that I had a schedule and that I needed to bring you these reviews. So I needed to get through these fragrances because this fragrance is so addictive. But let's jump right into it. All right, so this next one, guys, is Forbidden Sugar by Paris Corner from the Amir Collection. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, so it comes in this box. 
To me, it's a pretty basic box, but I'm not hating it because I'm here for the juice. And then here is the bottle that it comes in. It's a very simple bottle. It's one of the simplest bottles that I've seen lately. And guys, I'm gonna have to spray this fragrance because I I'm really obsessed with this fragrance. I'm gonna have to spray this one. Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay, so this is a fragrance that was supposed to be, or is, I'm sorry, inspired by the fragrance uh, called Sugar by Frank Boclet, I think his name is. I had never, I'm not familiar with Frank Boc uh, Boclet, and I'm not familiar with the Sugar fragrance either, but I can tell you, if the Sugar fragrance, oh my gosh, guys, I can smell it all over the room now. If that fragrance smells anything like this, I am speechless and that's rare but I am speechless like oh. so here is what I can tell you about this fragrance because this fragrance is also not on Fragantica um, so everything that I'm gonna tell you is just what I have experienced so this is a fragrance guys that is called forbidden sugar but the sugar is not forbidden in this fragrance because this is a very sweet fragrance. When I say sweet, I mean sweet. Oh, guys, but this fragrance is so good. I, I, I have to tell you, I, I love this fragrance. I, I, and I'm not even into super sweet fragrances, but there is something about the notes in this fragrance that just just makes it so addictive so as soon as it opens what i get immediately besides sugar which is the ongoing theme of this fragrance for sure i get that honey caramel and vanilla and they are here to stay they are not going anywhere they are not playing with you they are dominating here that vanilla is exquisite like it's almost like, and I don't want to say this, guys, but the vanilla in this fragrance is almost like, almost, okay? Don't, don't come for me. It's almost like the Guerlain vanilla. It, it's that same family, right? So the vanilla, the caramel, and the honey, they're all together. And they have a plot to make you addicted to this fragrance and they're gonna get their way. These three notes together are quite dense without being cloying. I don't know how they did it because they're dense together and, and they're syrupy. The honey here is definitely syrupy, but this fragrance, guys, is not cloying. But what I will tell you is that you need to be okay with sweet fragrances because this, I, I'm telling you, the sugar was not forbidden here at all. The sugar is everywhere in this fragrance. There are some fruits in this fragrance, but I only pick up on the peach and a hint of raspberry. Now, that may be because this fragrance hasn't had a chance to sit. Uh, maybe after it sits for a while, I'll pick up on all the other fruits, but what I pick up on is that peach. Needless to say, the peach and the raspberry have both been like caramelized in that continuous sugar of this journey. Now there is some coconut in this fragrance, but I don't distinctively pick up on the coconut as a scent itself, no. The way that the coconut has been done in this fragrance is like there's a nutty quality and a creaminess brought on by the coconut. I, I don't know how to explain it any other way. And of course, of course, in that creaminess is Yes, you got it, the sugar again. There are some white florals in here, but they're always in the background because center, front and center is, yes, the sugar and all those other notes that I just talked about. But the white florals are present towards the middle of the olfactory journey and they never leave. The white florals are there, but they're in the background. Are they faint? No, they're not faint. Are they super strong? No, they're not. They are done just right because this fragrance is so well balanced and so well blended. And 
when you really start to familiarize yourself with this fragrance, you quickly understand that the vision here was to create a sugar fragrance bring in all of those beautiful tonalities that are brought on by fruits and exotic things like coconut and vanilla and just bring it all in there with that underlying sugar now overall for me this is an exceptional fragrance that brings on an air of like happiness and flirtiness but at the same time interestingly enough it's a bit sexy. It's not a full-on sexy fragrance, but it's like almost playing with you, like toying with you and bordering on sexy. Now, just because I said playful and flirty, uh, you know, I'm talking about a lighthearted type of individual. And this individual can be young or, or on the more mature side. It doesn't matter. I can see anybody using this fragrance and I definitely consider this to be a unisex fragrance. If I had to pick a lean, probably I would pick, you know, leaning feminine because of the sugar. But honestly, I can see a man wearing this and just, you know, driving you crazy because there's a sweetness like what is going on here? Yes. The good news is that at the dry down, guys, for some reason, I find it to be less sweet. So at the dry down, it gives way to a bit more of the fruitiness with less sweet and, and definitely the florals are in play. But the fragrance is not linear at all. It has a very complex journey. This fragrance has not had a chance to sit and I'm already getting seven to eight hours for sure. The projection during the first two hours is super strong right now. So I, I, I don't recommend that you overspray this fragrance. So when I started talking about this fragrance, you saw that I sprayed myself and I only sprayed here. I did not spray in the other pulse point of this arm and I did not spray it anywhere else and I can smell it. It is so strong right now. Like I can really, really smell it. All in all, I definitely give this fragrance a 10 out of 10. All right. So the next fragrance that I want to talk about today is a fragrance that so many of you, so, so many of you have recommended. And I am speaking about Paris Corner Reficat. It comes in this box, just a regular box, which I don't have a problem with. Now this fragrance is supposed to be inspired by YSL's Baby Cat. Let me just start by saying that YSL Baby Cat is right now in my top 10 for life fragrances. But the funny thing is, is that I'm so afraid of, of running out of the bottle that I have of Baby Cat because it's not easy to find or to get. So I was very excited when you all told me about this fragrance and you told me what it was inspired by. I was very excited to pick it up. So right from the opening, when you get that pink pepper and that black pepper, th there's just something that happens to you. It stimulates you in a certain way that you know that this is not gonna be just any fragrance. Midway down the journey in this fragrance, what I pick up predominantly, like there's other notes like olibanum, but what I'm picking up like without a shadow of a doubt is saffron. The saffron is quite dominant to my nose, but the saffron is done <sighs> impeccably, guys. At the dry down to conclude this very like sexy and alluring journey, you have like vanilla essence. When I first sprayed this fragrance, my first reaction immediately of, upon first sniff was, oh no, this is not YSL baby cap. But then no more than five seconds went by and I started to get like for real, full on, full on YSL baby cat DNA. The closer you get to the dry down of this fragrance, the closer to YSL Baby Cat you get. Now, this is my bottle of Baby Cat. And I can tell you that the difference 
that I'm here to speak about today amongst another one that's even more interesting that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna talk about next. YSL Baby Cat is definitely a tad sweeter. Is it sweeter, like super sweet? No, but it's definitely a tad sweeter and it is something that I picked up on immediately. These fragrances to me are 95% the same. They are 95% the same because the difference in sweetness between Baby Cat and Reficat is not, it, it's almost like negligible. It, but my nose picks up on it, yes, but does it make me feel uh, that, that there's quite a difference or that there's even really a difference between wearing one or the other? No, not really. So I don't know how Paris Corner did it, but <laughs> they've got this one down. You know, guys, I rarely throw wrenches or spins on reviews. I just try to stay objective and on the lane of the fragrances that we're talking about. But I can't do that with this one because again, YSL Baby Cat is very near and dear to me. Let me tell you something. I have another fragrance in my collection, which is known to be a leather fragrance, right? Um, that I absolutely love and that I have loved from the first moment I sniffed it. And even though it's in the same family as YSL Baby Cat, they are not the same at all they address like a different facet or, or or like a it's like looking at leather from two different perspectives in my opinion and the fragrance that i'm talking about is ganymede have you ever gotten your nose on ganymede have you ever sniffed ganymede and have you ever sniffed ysl baby cat and i want you to tell me if you have i want you to tell me your thoughts. Now, Ganymede is from Marc Antoine Barrios, and I'm not going to get into the notes and all of that. The reason that I'm bringing it up is because for me, Reef Cot is a cross between YSL Baby Cat and Ganymede. So the tad sweetness of the YSL Baby Cat is uh, minimized a bit by the non, uh, by the not so intense sweetness that you find in Ganymede, right? So when you combine those two, I'm telling you, you are going to get 100% Rifakat, 100%. So I am right now so excited and so happy because these are two fragrances that I absolutely love, like love, 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 and they're pricey. And here's Reficot, which has been done exceptionally at a fraction of the cost. Now, Reficot right now is giving me a good seven to eight hours. Uh, I'm pretty sure that once it sits, it's going to be a powerhouse for sure. I can also tell you that this is a fragrance that I personally would limit to fall, winter, and spring. This is not a fragrance that I would use during the summer. Um, and this is definitely a fragrance that you can dress down or you can dress up day or night. Needless to say, if I could give this fragrance more than a 10, I would give it a 20. This is definitely a 10 out of 10. I'm sure that you can now understand why I needed to bring this video in today. Instead of doing our usual haul, I wanted to do the review today because these are fragrances, guys. There is not one fragrance in these 10 fragrances that I do not highly recommend. This next fragrance, guys, from the moment that I hauled it with you till today, there is not one day that if I am not wearing it, I have to go sniff it because I absolutely love it. This fragrance is exceptional and I am talking about Maison Floor Oud from Codlage. Guys, I can't speak highly enough of this fragrance. This is just exceptional. This fragrance does not remind me of anything. I can almost assure you this is not inspired by anything because I've had it long enough and I've worked on it to become familiar with it long enough to at this point have realized, oh my gosh, that is familiar too, or it smells like, or no. This to me is a standalone creation from Kadlash. I could be wrong because I haven't gotten my nose on every fragrance that exists in the universe, but 
Um, I've gotten my nose on quite a few and I can tell you that this is not reminding me of anything. But this right here, this is like a masterpiece at an affordable price. Like, unbelievable. Let me walk you through the olfactory journey of this fragrance. So this fragrance opens uh, with the most bright and crisp citrusy opening I have in just about any fragrance with the exception of Hashibat X from Nishane. This opening is so beautiful and it's all because of the mandarin orange. Typically for you to get a uh, fresh, citrusy, crisp, bright opening like this, you typically in fragrances find that bergamot is involved. But I will tell you that that mandarin orange, I don't know what they did. I don't know if it's if, if they iced the mandarin orange, if they watered it down, but this is a fresh, beautiful, crisp, bright opening. Now, as soon as you get that mandarin orange, the next thing that's going to follow is a very, very beautiful and young rose. And the freshness is really not coming from the rose, it's coming from the citrusness, but, but the citrusy note is, is making that rose smell even younger then and i don't know how to explain it any other way but just that whole mix in the opening is so different and so beautifully done than anything else that i have in my collection guys as the journey continues you're going to get the most lush note of a realistic pear it is a pear that is sweet you know when a pear is so sweet that as you cut into it, it's almost like soft. It's not soft that it's turning bad. No, it's like soft, almost bordering on creamy. That's the pear that you're going to get. But then to really put you over the top and drive you, oh my goodness, and drive you insane, you are going to take that pear and you're going to find it blended beautifully with orange blossom. Now, you know that orange blossom typically brings a certain extent of like creaminess, like there's a creamy quality brought on by orange blossom. But here in this fragrance, it is emphasized by that pear, that sweet pear. That midway to the dry down is just heavenly. So I haven't quite gotten over the bright citrusy mandarin orange opening with that young, beautiful, vibrant rose when I'm now here living my best life with orange blossom and pear working their magic. The dry down guys, you get all of those notes blended beautifully with quite a bit of like ambergris. And in addition to that, there's like a woody, a woodiness that comes in and it's like, I think it's balsam. Uh, you know, they call it Peruvian balsam, but for me, it's just balsam. And I definitely get that sandalwood, which adds even more creaminess to it. At the dry down, guys, I'm telling you, you are in absolute heaven with this fragrance. This is a fragrance that please, if you've picked it up, if you've gotten your nose on it, I want to know your thoughts of this one right now. And it hasn't had a chance to sit much. I'm getting at least eight hours. I'm getting a strong projection from the opening and I am definitely getting an incredible trail scent. That's the other thing. This is the type of fragrance that I would reserve for date night, definitely for special occasions. You can definitely dress it up and dress it down. You can do whatever you want with it, um, but this is such an incredible and special fragrance that you know, for casual, I'm going to the supermarket, I'm going to go pick up the kids, you know, for things like that, I would just use another fragrance and keep this for those occasions where 
you just want to make a statement because it is really that special. If I could give Maison Floor Oud a 20 out of 10, I would because that fragrance definitely deserves it. I am dying for one of you to leave me a message letting me know that you have it or if you end up picking it up, please, because I haven't found anybody else to discuss this fragrance with in detail and there's not any reviews out there except for I think one. Um, so, you know, and it's not something that I can find on Fragantica. Now the next fragrance and our last fragrance, I thought Maison Floor Oud was the last, but it's not because we have one more fragrance that I just have to talk about today because it falls in this group of exceptional fragrances that have blown my mind beyond a shadow of a doubt. These fragrances that I've discussed with you for the most part today, will be in my collection forever. If I can continue to buy them and find them and buy them, I will. So let me talk to you now about Emir Identity Oud Crescent. Now, you guys know that I am an Oud lover, but I am not into skanky, barnyard, uh, like not well done at all ouds like who would be right but there are people who do like the skanky oud because they're you know they're really into heavy animalic notes this fragrance i i don't know if this was inspired on something i think it was inspired by the way but by, by a fragrance and i can't remember by whom but inspired by the fragrance moon which i've never gotten my nose on but if this is what moon smells like, well, hello moon, welcome moon, because this is, guys, exceptional. Let me just start by telling you that this is a fragrance that I'm getting, it has not had a chance to sit for months and I'm getting 12 plus hours, hands down. And let me tell you, if you spray this on your clothes, get ready, because even after you wash them, guys, I'm not lying. Okay, I'm not lying. Even after you wash the clothes, there's like a lingering scent that's this fragrance. When you wear it for an entire day, the projection is crazy. It is absolutely crazy, like four or five hours of a strong projection. And I made the mistake the first time I, <laughs> the first time I, I was testing this fragrance, I made the mistake of overspraying. Uh, I, I almost choked myself and my husband in the process because this is a beast. This is definitely a unisex fragrance and this is for sure an amber, amber floral fragrance. When this fragrance opens on my nose, it opens with quite a bit of saffron and raspberry. I don't get anything else right now. I just get saffron and raspberry. As the journey continues, I pick up on the rose, but the rose is not center stage at all. You know who is center stage here? The violet. So after that opening of the raspberry and that spiciness and warmth brought on by the saffron, I'm getting the rose, which is a bit of a mature rose because this is a serious fragrance. This is a serious mature fragrance. This is not for someone who's very young, um, but in all honesty, I can see anybody of any age using this fragrance. It's just that I'm letting you know that this is not a uh, lighthearted type fragrance. This is a very mature fragrance. This is a fragrance that I would use for casual occasions, formal occasions, any occasion, but you just have to know how to own it because this is this is quite intense. So I get that violet and all throughout the journey, almost after probably five minutes into the opening of the fragrance, I pick up on the oud. The oud is not a strong oud, but it is not a light oud. It is a bit intense. The oud definitely has a presence in this fragrance and it is not a soft or a light oud. So you must like the note of oud in order to appreciate and like this fragrance. If you're not into oud, if you're new to oud, I'm not sure that I would pick up this fragrance unless you get your nose on it. 
but if you've never had a fragrance with oud this to me is not the starting point at the dry down i get a beautiful creaminess that's brought on between a very well done patchouli some sandalwood you have the oud present you have that violet that never leaves the dry down is a bit powdery not very powdery but there's definitely a degree of powderiness to it and the rose is still there at the dry down but very faint because the rose is not the star of this fragrance at all when I initially looked at the notes of this fragrance, although I saw, I think it was lychee, and of course I saw the raspberry, um, I, I thought, uh-oh, this is gonna be their spin on rose and oud. Here we go, yet another rose oud fragrance. Boy, was I wrong. This is not a rose oud fragrance. I definitely give this fragrance a 10 out of 10. All right, guys, so as you know, uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to share with you the requirements, which are very minimal, to join the 5K giveaway. All you have to do, of course, is be a part of our fragrance love and family here on YouTube. So you have to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And then you also have to follow me on Instagram. In Instagram, I'm just Arahi World. So all you have to do is follow me there. And then just leave a quick comment in this video or any video between now and March 1st, just stating, please add me to the Arahi giveaway. I will be announcing two winners the week of March 3rd, and each will get a $50 cash deposit via Cash App. I am very sorry, but at this time, the giveaway is limited only to U.S. residents. All right, guys, so we've reached the end of today's video. Anyway, thanks so much for hanging with me today, and I will see you in the next video.